Have mercy on us, Lord, Jesus our Saviour, burdened with sin we implore you. O great Redeemer, King of all creation, as we are sinners, we deserve your judgment. Jesus, be gracious, hear our prayer of sorrow. Have mercy on us, Lord, Jesus our Saviour, burdened with sin we implore you. We beg you, Jesus God immense in power, listen in kindness as we ask forgiveness. Though sin condemns us, you are strong to save us. Have mercy on us, Lord Jesus our Saviour, Burdened with sin, we implore you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, welcome to this Eucharist of the second Sunday of Lent. And today... I welcome not only our friends and parishioners on the social media, but also the viewers of Nusat English. We here in Jordan still are not allowed to have masses with public on Sundays at least, so we do it in this very simple version because it's not important how many people are here, but it's important that we pray that we are together with Christ, that we go with him to Jerusalem. Yes, while the Western Church is already there and Jesus solemnly enters into the Holy City, we are still in the beginning of Lent, the second Sunday. So his way to Jerusalem, to the cross, is just beginning. Let us go with him. Let us prepare us as he would have prepared himself. Let us put ourselves into the presence of God, acknowledging that we need his mercy, that we are so thankful that Jesus goes this way to pay for all our sins because without him we couldn't do it. So let us ask for God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. My Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie Eleison. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. 
God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moria. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abram built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I now know that you are devoted to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abram looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the, in the thicket, so went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of the enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let our response be, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, even when I said I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your mate. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sisters and brothers, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, listen to him. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his glosses became dazzling white, such as no full on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, 
and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we can't see clearly any longer, when we are really messed up with the things of our daily life, then at least some of us like to go on a hike, to get fresh air, maybe to leave the city of Amman and to just get out in the countryside, to get fresh air into the lungs, enough of oxygen, and, and then also the difficult thoughts and the confusion will leave us. And even more so, we not just hike in the plains, but when we walk up on a mountain. This moment when you are on the top of the mountain and look around and, and all the difficulties and all the struggle that you have becomes small and insignificant to the beauty you can see. This, dearly beloved brothers and sisters, is one experience that nearly all human beings can relate to. And so it's not a big surprise that going up to the top of the mountain is not only on this human level something important, something beautiful, but also in a religious sense. Yes, if we look into the book of books, if we look into the scripture, we see how often God is revealing himself on the top of the mountain. Yes, if you go through the Bible from the Genesis to the Revelation of John, we can say it. On the top of the mountain, God is making himself seen. How he is. The walk up to the, the top of the mountain becomes in the religious understanding also a walk to understand who God is. Because in the plains of our everyday life, we have our ideas how God is and what he should do and how he should help us and why isn't he listening to my prayers and all of this. But then, on the top of the mountain, we will understand him. One of the first incidents of this is actually what we have heard in the first reading. This difficult story of God, how he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. We have heard just a short worship. So, if you want, open after this Mass your Bible and read the whole story in Genesis chapter 22. Because there are some beautiful things, some details that they left out in the reading of today. For example, that Abraham and Isaac are walking three days. Not one, not two, not four, but three. And this is, in the language of the Bible, another quote that makes us understand that God will make himself seen. On the third day, Jesus rises from the dead. On the third day, Abraham and Isaac meet the angel of the Lord on the top of the mountain to understand that God does not want sacrifices of human beings, but that God wants the sacrifice of our will. This is what he learns. Abraham and what Isaac learns and what they bring into the history of the people of God, that God does not want the sacrifice of human beings. This is what this story is about. Abraham has to learn it because in the peoples around Israel, in the people around in Babylon, in Ashuria, in the Hattites, the Egyptians even, 
they would, in a difficult situation, even sacrifice a human being just to get a grace or something from God. And the God and Father of Jesus Christ does not want it. What he wants from Abraham and what he wants from us is that we are devoting ourselves to him. Not me, myself, and I are in the center of my attention, but God and the other. This is what Abraham learns in the first reading. On a quite hard way, I have to admit, but he learns it. And it's written into our hearts from this moment on. And yes, when in the gospel of today, Jesus walks up this high mountain of the transfiguration, we know it. It will be glorious. We know it because he leads his disciples up the mountain. And we know it, and we understand it because he takes Peter, James, and John. Always, when these three are named, something really important will happen. So the readers of the Gospel of Mark were really excited to hear and to listen and to understand what is the message of this event when Jesus led these three disciples up to the mountain. But of course, they had all these stories in their, in their memory of Abraham on the mountain, of Moses on the mountain, of Elijah on the mountain. Moses sees on the, on the Sinai God as he is and receives the Ten Commandments. Elijah on the mountain of Horeb sees God. And now, Peter, James, and John will see how God really is. And they are surprised. They are in awe. They cannot really talk. They don't know what to say. Peter is bubbling around of building tents and to stay. But they understand. More than before and more than after, just in the moment of the resurrection, they will understand more and deeper who Jesus is. But there they see it. On the mountain of the transfiguration, they see how Jesus is transfigured, how the divinity of Christ is shining through his humanity and in his humanity. And they hear the voice. And this is all too much for them. So when they go down, Jesus to say, okay, Stay silent, think about it. When the Son of Man has been risen from the dead, then you can talk about it. Then this will get deeper into your heart and into your understanding, and then you will be able to grasp it. And then, after this beautiful day, Jesus will go up on another mountain which will be Golgotha, the mountain of Calvary. And he will even mount the cross. And there it's also true what I said before, that on the top of the mountain, God reveals himself the way he really is. God does not want sacrifices of human beings. He himself makes the only necessary sacrifice in giving his son to pay our debt, to wash us clean, to save us, and to redeem us from our sins. This is the God we believe in. A God who does not want sacrifices but mercy. And the only sacrifice that we can give him is the sacrifice of our praise, the sacrifice of our will. All this what we try to do during this Lenten season. But please don't misunderstand me. We cannot save ourselves with that. 
Christ has saved us and redeemed us through his sacrifice. But we can only become part of this mystery. As Peter, James and John were made partakers when they went up to the mountain with Jesus, so we can become partakers of Christ's death and resurrection when we go up to the mountain. And this mountain can be a lot. It can be a pilgrimage, yes. And I hope that the times will be like this, that we easily can make pilgrimages again. It can be the sacrifice we do now in Lent, when we are abstaining from something to test our will. It can be the moment of prayer we do extra in these days of preparation for Easter. Or it can be that we meet someone or call someone or write an email or a WhatsApp to someone we don't want to contact. But we go this extra mile to the reconciliation that is hard for us. Because yes, walking up on a mountain is hard. Sometimes, like Abraham, you need three days. Sometimes it goes quicker, of course. But we, thanks be to God, Alhamdulillah, we have 40 days of reaching this mountain where we will see Christ as he really is. Let us now ask God that he may give us, for the next week of our Lenten journey, his Holy Spirit, so that we can continue to walk up with all the struggle and difficulties this may have for us, with all the questions, but with the confidence that the one who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, will give us everything according to his will. Let us now confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for as man and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you now to bring your prayers and intentions to the Lord. And as always, we start by praying for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the Patriarch of Jerusalem, Pierre Battista, for our Bishop here in Jordan, William, for all the bishops and all those who have and bear responsibilities in our church, and for all Christians in our church and in all denominations, that these days of Lent may be, and for the Western Church, this holy week that they enter may be a time of grace, a time of meeting God 
as he really is, full of mercy, full of love, and full of closeness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's also pray for those who in these times are suffering because of the corona pandemic, those who are sick, those who take care for a sick friend or family member, those who work hard in the hospitals and medical institutes, and all those who, who work for that many people can get the vaccine. Let's pray for our government and for our king especially, that they may find the good ways to, to lead us through this epidemic. And for all who are suffering in these times, that God may be close to them and console them and strengthen them in their struggles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in a moment of silence, I invite you to offer your own prayers that they can be present in this Eucharist too. God of mercy and of might, we give you thanks that you are with us, that you are walking with us through these difficult times and that you are always giving us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us. We also give you thanks that you are listening to our prayers, as we know that you are doing, and we ask you to answer them according to your will. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this bread we offer, fruit of the earth, work of our hands. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed are you. Lord, God of all creation, thanks to your goodness, this wine we offer, fruit of the earth, work of our hands, it will become the cup of life. Blessed be God, blessed be God, Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
through Christ our Lord. For after he had taught the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, let's we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Saviour, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Peter Faber, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Pierre Battista, our Patriarch, William, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. God has revealed himself as the Father of Jesus Christ. And in our baptism, he has also become our Father. So let us pray the words that Jesus himself has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant it peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion. Tell Jesus how much you love him, and how much you would love to go with him through this time of Lent, and especially how much you want to receive him now into your heart.
This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers, even now, of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we ask for God's blessing, I want to express my gratitude for the team of Nursat of being here, of our friend Danny, of course, too. He's also helping for the live stream. Thank you to make it possible that people can, in these difficult times, participate, being partakers of the sacred mysteries, at least in this way. Let's now ask for God's blessing. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down to receive God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful in the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of the Almighty and merciful God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. At the cross her station keeping Stood the mournful mother weeping Close to Jesus to the last Through her heart his sorrow sharing All his bitter anguish bearing Now at length the sword has passed Oh, how sad and so distressed was that mother highly blessed of the so begotten one.